thought Mazes and Monsters was a far out game? Swords, poison, battles, maiming, killing? Well, that's nothing compared to the other evil role playing game that not nearly as many people saw Skullduggery! And no, it's not a ripoff or even all that similar. Actually, Skullduggery was made before Mazes and Monsters, and the two movies have almost nothing in common. For instance, Skullduggery is not nearly as good. Well, okay, they do have one thing in common. Wendy Crewson is in both movies. You may remember her as the actress on the other side of this conversation. Hey, I'm in New York. New York? Robbie, are you all right? What happened? Oh, no, I can't remember. I mean, Wendy, what happened? Did you get typecast as the worried gamer girlfriend character? Oh! Uh. How jinxed do you have to be to have two shitty Dungeons and Dragons psycho killer movies on your resume? Anyway, you can tell this movie's gonna be really weird right off the bat because of its super funky and insane theme song. hard coming up with lyrics. I mean, what the fuck rhymes with skullduggery? Dull thuggery, ass buggery, motherfuckery. Ooh, why it does appear there's skullduggery afoot after all. Either that or it's some kind of medieval themed cooking show. And then you slow roast the lamb for 45 minutes at 350 degrees. Now here's a casserole we started cooking earlier. Just garnish with parsley. Mwah, delicious. Spirit of evil. Dedicating ourselves to thee, we give thanks. Oh, forget it, our cult sucks. Nobody shows up to meetings anymore. Our spirit of evil's just a creepy rubber jester mask we bought at Walgreens for $7.99. Eh, skullduggery, this script is terrible. So buy the armor from Italy. See you. Ah! Ah! I didn't do it! Power is now in these hands, Adam. These hands, which... Uh, oh, hang on. You can't really see my hands back there. Let me just get down there, step over this dead body. I'm so sorry about that. I'm just trying to be dramatic. You will be given a choice. To play. Or die. Pick a card. Any card. Now, we've never met before, have we? You must choose. But beware... One of the fruits is poisoned, and if you choose it, the cards will indeed hold the truth. Shouldn't this guy be calling for guards or running for his life or something? They give him a 50-50 shot at eating a poison apple and he's just rolling with it? And then she just stabs him in the heart with a hairpin? I don't know, this footage is so absurdly dark, I can almost never tell what's going on. He chose poorly. I gave your husband his power, on condition that he, in turn, give me his soul. But he betrayed me. I demand the conditions of our agreement be met, and I claim the soul of your unborn child. And I cast the spell on him and his offspring for generations to come. Diabolus me adjuvet, so the devil help me. Fast forward to 1982 and... <laughs> Trottleville? Uh, you're gonna have to give me a state on that one, movie. I can't say I've ever passed through Trottleville. Anyway, this is our... Well, I was gonna say hero, but there's no way that term applies. Protagonist? I don't know, that doesn't work either. Uh, this is Adam and his girlfriend Barbara. Poor Barbara just seems drawn to that quiet, unassuming, psychopathic type who can't distinguish fantasy from reality. It's hard to say where the game begins or life ends. Sometimes I feel like one of those figurines on the board. They work together at a costume rental warehouse, mainly so they can steal the medieval clothes and wear them at their D&D sessions. Mr. Sluzichuk, how do I look? Well, how do I put this politely? Oh, I know. Ah! Ah! Okay, it's... Uh... Your turn. Roll, Adam. Okay. Uh, what character do you want to be? I want to play the warlock. I love the power glove. I want to play the warlock. Great choice, Adam. You got 180 IQ. 18 stamina. 
And a seven charisma. That's the highest score I've ever seen. You couldn't have done much better than that, Adam. Uh, you've never seen higher than a seven charisma on three dice? Plus, with 180 IQ and 18 stamina, the movie seems to imply the guy just rolled straight sixes on three dice twice, and the number she's impressed with is seven charisma? You see, because on three dice, the scores range from three to 18, and seven, you know what, fuck it. Then we cut to some goofy office with weird, out-of-place sleazy sax music where a mystery man is piecing together a puzzle with the biggest pieces ever! What, did Fisher Price make this thing? And when I say he's piecing it together, I mean he puts one piece down very carefully, then stops. And that's the scene! Whew! That one enormous piece is about all my mind can take right now. Well, if that scene wasn't random enough for you, I fucking dare you to try and tell me what in the fuck this next line is supposed to mean. All right, let's wrap up the game. Chuck, can't you use some other finger, like maybe the middle one? <laughs> what? Chuck, can't you use some other finger, like maybe the middle one? Oh my god, this fucking guy. His gimmick is that he keeps making lame sexual innuendos with every single line. I took care of the white sorceress. Uh, uh, uh. Really? Did you have a good time doing it? <laughs> every... Line. You will outfit the boys and Barbara will give a hand to the girls. Well, can I give a hand to the girls too? I've got a rash on my ankle and it's itching. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I get an itch sometimes too, but uh, not my ankle and uh, I know how to cure it. Uh, 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 uh. Anybody else need a ride? Yeah. Only if I can sit with Barbara in the back seat. And guess which character survives the entire movie? Gah! Hey, Barbara, want to see why they call me BJ? <laughs> You're full of hot air, you know that? Yeah. Want to watch me suck a greyhound bust through a straw? <sighs> Is he boasting about his ability to give other men blowjobs in order to impress a woman? It does not compute. Listen, I've uh, got a raccoon in my pants. Would you like to set it free? Good God, I didn't think it was possible to make a character more shallow than fucking Quagmire. Anyway, Adam has to supply costumes to a junior college talent show the next day. Doesn't that sound exciting? Well, too bad, because we get to see fucking all of it. Apparently it's a production involving pirates and a barbershop quartet and clowns and gay sailors. I don't believe it. No dress rehearsal. This low-budget crap wouldn't buy a bag of bird shit. Uh, I know, girlfriend. And then resorting to stock lisping drama fag stereotypes in this movie? Hated it. I can't believe I have to recap what's going on here. So, a fruity magician in a top hat appears, waves his magic wand around, and then makes beer appear and turns the bowl of cotton balls into tortilla chips, although I had to watch the scene three times just to realize that. The editing is so bad, it's hard to tell anything changed at all in this scene. But what kills me is nobody in this room seems at all shocked by a literal miracle occurring in this room akin to Jesus with the loaves and the fishes. Dude just made beer out of nothing! the greatest power imaginable and they're just like hey that's kind of cool whatever what happened here was a miracle and i want you to fucking acknowledge it like okay what the fuck now there's a janitor with a tic-tac-toe board on the back of his jumpsuit it's like someone came up with character concepts by throwing magnetic poetry against a fridge is that still a thing magnetic poetry with the words you put anyone god i'm getting old well, strap in, folks, because this movie has more lame talent show footage than the incredibly strange creatures who stopped living and became mixed-up zombies. The first and the best, the one and the only, Simcoe the Magician. <laughs> he really gets a lot of mileage out of that tipping his hat thing, doesn't he? magic he just switched flowers between edits how lame is i mean that's not even challenging to spot fucking anyone could do that and then he does this thing where he turns a rose petal into blood but the paint on the rose is so obvious i'm amazed there weren't kids heckling this asshole from the audience adam have you seen the magician 
The guy is unbelievable. I know, he fucking sucks! Oh my god, this guy is a freaking sorcerer. How do he do that? Does this even qualify as trick photography? Why even bother writing a stage magician character in the script in the first place if nobody in the cast could perform even the simplest of magic tricks? They couldn't just shell out a hundred bucks and hire an actual party magician to get in front of the camera and do his act for an hour? I mean, they just had to make stuff up here between edits? Geez, my dad doing the coin behind the ear routine or the detachable thumb trick would have blown the roof off that place. <laughs> watch a lay medieval themed play where Adam is asked to fill in for an actor who no-showed the performance. I can't say I blame the guy. My love, I am not a poor page, but the son of the king of Moravia. What's wrong? Oh, shucks, my beloved. Here, throw this costume on and get on stage, and uh, I'll tell you what to do in a second. Don't worry, it's not a speaking part. <laughs> Thank God for that, I've seen this guy act. I want to play the warlock. And here's the really scary part. This play? Not supposed to be a comedy. The Prince of Moravia will never be a member of our royal family. I'd rather die. You got it, Pops. Now we will live happily, happily ever, ever after. after. But that's it? What the hell was the moral of that story? Kill people to get what you want? What the hell? Jesus, Bob, check the fuse box. Then for absolutely no reason, Adam starts following one of the actresses around backstage and tries to kill her with his prop weapons. I guess it's implied the magician cast a spell on him to do it, or there's an evil puppet that makes him do it, or the guy with the puzzle, or... Maybe the janitor with the tic-tac-toe board on his back? And I, I don't know. And yeah, he has a real functional bow and arrow. It's worth mentioning at this point that Adam is kind of stupid. I just don't know. The Lord forbade us to eat the fruits from this tree. Don't be a schmuck, Eve. Okay, so the apples on the tree are labeled Granny Smith apples. So when Adam was giving names to all the animals and plants on Earth, he named the apples Granny Smith apples and then hung a sign on the tree. Eve picks an apple so as not to be a schmuck, causing Adam to have flashbacks to his previous life in Canterbury. He remembers the poisoned apples and starts casting the old demonic spell, when suddenly a real snake appears and entangles Eve, killing her. Or at least that's what Adam sees, because he's probably nuts and seeing jester puppets everywhere. I just felt so damn helpless. There was an 18-year-old girl going into convulsions and dying of a heart attack before my very eyes. I'm a nurse and there was nothing I could do about it. Yeah, it must have been rough being a trained nurse and not being able to do anything except fucking CPR! Adam keeps insisting that he saw a deadly python kill the woman because, you know, it's easy to mistake that for a heart attack. But he doesn't really want to see a doctor about it. Well, how do we look? <laughs> well, since you asked... Ah! You're so funny! <laughs> Maybe a psychologist would help. Oh, come on, Barbara. They're all full of bull. I, uh, I know a fortune teller. 
And I've been to her before, so I know she's good. Oh, yeah, psychologists are just bullshit. So let's call a fortune teller. That's hard science. So he goes to get a tarot reading and see if he can spot this cliche coming from a mile away. Of course, he gets the death card. This causes him to go coconuts again, and he suddenly leaps forward and stabs her in the fucking throat! Oh, man! Well, I mean, come on. If she was any good as a fortune teller, she probably should have seen that coming. The next day, Adam just goes back to his D&D game, where the DM tells him they've been hired by a high-level wizard to assassinate a powerful female sorcerer who wears all white. And for some reason, Adam interprets this to mean he should go murder a nurse. I don't know, just roll with it. A sorceress dressed in white. Kill her! Go to the hall! Go to the hall! Don't stop, don't stop. Oh, Doctor, you're the best in this room at this time. Oh. Oh, no. what kind of shitty pillow talk? Who talks like that, anyway? Wait, did she just fuck that guy wearing all of her underwear? Or did she just pull her panties on, like, at light speed? And what kind of fucking hospital hangs hacksaws on the wall? But there is no conclusive evidence. <laughs> if you have any information, phone Doctor, you scared the wits out of me. And that was Prince. Trottleville's Peg Heckler defeated and Until next time, sweetheart. Okay, all right, what the hell? She fucked a doctor in a gorilla suit? God, I haven't been this disturbed since I saw a guy in a bear suit giving another dude a blowjob in The Shining. At least that scene kind of made sense in context. Remember when this movie used to be about a role-playing game and a satanic cult? Because, God, I think this plot train just jumped the fucking rails. And now here's the weather. Oh, right. I suppose I should take some time off from fucking Dr. Gorilla to give those dialysis patients their meds. The nurse goes wandering around the strangely empty hospital and grows terrified that someone's following her when she runs into Adam in disguise. You'd think she'd be smart enough to recognize the doctors that work on her floor, and that doctors don't commonly walk around the hospital with face masks on. But then this was the woman who just got done fucking a guy in a gorilla suit two minutes ago. After stabbing her in the brain with a pen, and really, I feel like I should be able to make a pen joke here, but I got nothing. But really? Dr. Gorilla's fucking someone in a supply closet now. It literally hasn't even been three minutes since he just railed the last nurse doggy style. This guy's a fucking machine. Who knew Furry's got this much pussy anyway? Man, I gotta get me a gorilla suit. And the fucking janitor is here too? What does this motherfucker work for every building in the fucking city? Is there any significance to the tic-tac-toe game in progress on his back? Is it meant to raise tension or be symbolic of anything? What is with the constant callbacks of the puzzle being built? What, if anything, does this have to do with Dungeons and Dragons? Does any of this mean anything? I think we all know the answer to that one. I, I just can't take this. This movie gets worse, if you can believe that. You know, I just thought of the Skullduggery drinking game. Every time there's a meaningless bullshit callback scene, take a shot. You know what? If we're gonna get started, I need more booze. So, hang on. Get down. Where'd you come from, anyway? One second. Are you hurt? Just my ego. Turn around, show me your ass. <laughs> Listen, you can't go out in public like this, but I could give you a ride. Yeah, I'll bet you could. Or maybe you already have someone who can clean you up. You know, granny, wife, nanny, girlfriend. Hmm. Not even a girlfriend. Well, I guess I'll have to take you home with me. I've seen slutty nurse pornos on Cinemax that didn't have this many slutty nurses in them. And why is she instantly attracted to Adam in the first place? Mmm, a clumsy average looking oaf. I need this man's cock inside me stat. The nurse takes Adam back to her place to press his pants. No, seriously. She leaves work to do this. Since I'm ironing, I might as well do my uniform. Okay, really, dude, what does she need to get through to you? A flare gun? Maybe we should... Hmm. Do something about it. 
I just don't get it. I mean, she's known this guy for precisely zero seconds, and she's already throwing herself at him. It's like a fucking alien wrote this movie. Or Ben's eye. Same thing, really. Can I have my pants back now? What? Oh, I know. You like to play games, don't you? All right. Let's pretend that I'm the mummy, and you're the good little boy. Is she trying to seduce him by pretending to be his mother? Mommy will take good care of her good little boy. She'll cover him up with his big white blanket. And she'll play with him underneath his big white blanket. Oh. And soon he'll love her. And then she's going to show him her enormous skills. <laughs> So Adam finally snaps and attacks her with an iron before finding a more suitable weapon. Oh, well, <laughs> that's convenient. What in the hell kind of nurse nails a sickle to the wall? The nurse flees the apartment and tries to find shelter in a nearby church. Hey, lady! Try flagging down one of the many cars in the street! But inside the church she sees... Liberace? I'll be right with you as soon as I finish this verse, no ho! Oh, and well, it appears to be nighttime suddenly. So he throws the sickle at her as two people we've never seen before look on, and a really goofy sound effect plays. But he ends up missing anyway. So he throws up the devil horns and chants his evil magic spell at her, and then we're at a funeral, and then Adam is there in costume, and... You know, I gave up trying to figure this out a while ago. I'm just telling you what's happening. The nurse flees from the funeral and runs right into Adam again, who runs her through with his sword. And no, I don't know where he got the costume or the long sword. After that, he goes back to work at the costume store because, of course, nobody's able to catch or identify him, despite there being several dozen witnesses to his killing spree. Of course, this is all more than likely just taking place inside Adam's head, because he's about as unreliable a narrator as you can get, considering... Ah! Why did he get into a bunny suit? What does that have to do with role-playing? The medieval costume and sword I get, but this is pure nightmare fuel! Come on! All right. Get on. You are challenged by the apostles of hell. Dude, that's awesome! The disciples of hell? That's totally what I'm gonna call my band! This is their sign. So how do we handle them? Slay them violently, one after another. And if we don't? They'll do it to you. Who's their leader? The devil himself. Where can we find them? At the Villa Evil. The devil lives at the Villa Evil? He couldn't do any better than that? You know, Exodus from Ultima 3 lived in Castle Hell, and he surrounded it with a lawn that would fucking kill you. This place is guarded by a gay cop and one of the droogs. And so Adam just leaves the D&D game and goes to this party, because there really is a place in town called Villa Evil. It's called that because it's owned by Dr. Evil. No, I'm not kidding. Mr. Burton. I'm Dr. Evil. Who in the hell goes to a party hosted by Dr. Evil? Tell me, Mr. Burton. What fantasy would you least expect to find realized tonight? I don't know, a Transformers movie that doesn't suck ass? So, Dr. Evil apparently casts a spell to charm a woman into seducing Adam into his satanic cult. But of course, Adam is on his much more righteous mission, killing helpless women with a fucking meat cleaver. Oh, bad edit there. Foul. Boo! Ladies and gentlemen, would you kindly give your attention to Karen, our beautiful and gifted ballerina? Oh, good. Impromptu fireside ballet. That's how you know when a party is officially off the hizook. God, I almost wish for more cleaver murders just to spice the party up. I don't know, I just expect a little more action at a party thrown by Dr. Evil. You know, something really evil, like karaoke. This rate, they're gonna start a fucking poetry slam. To the past, 
the present is the future. And to the future, the present is the past. Therefore, if the present is both future and past, we live in both dimensions simultaneously. Oh, wow. Dr. Evil decides to send his ballerina down to seduce Adam in his dungeon, because of course he has a dungeon. So he kills her with a conveniently placed steam valve that literally incinerates her down to her skeleton. God damn, the Predator didn't even manage to do that right on his first try. Adam's a fucking beast, yo. Didn't even burn his hand or anything. And at this point, Adam's racking up more stealth kills than the fucking guy from Splinter Cell. Adam then dresses like a knight. Seriously, he brought a suit of armor with him, too? And even though he's completely mute with not a square inch of his body visible, still somehow seduces several women on the dance floor, including this friendly hula dancer. She takes him somewhere private, because you know, apparently Villa Evil is full of private places to kill people, and suddenly she gets jumped by the two door guards who attempt to rape her. Funny, they just didn't look the sort to be into girls is all. So Adam impales all three at once with a fucking spear. And you gotta admit, this guy gets results. I mean, damn! Jason Voorhees couldn't have pulled that shit off. Then Adam gets into yet another costume, pretending to do a magic act where he brings two of the ladies on the stage, and then just leaves. That's all that happens. And then Robin Hood shoots the Jester Puppet with an invisible bow, and then a cross bursts into flame... somewhere... And then we see the puppet and one of the women drown in a fish tank backstage. Then somewhere, the guy finally finishes the puzzle! who's revealed to be Dr. Evil, who I thought was supposed to be in the crowd. Ah, that changes everything, because Dr. Evil was the guy finishing the puzzle that in no way tied to the plot. Ah! Then it's the next day when the police are cleaning up all the bodies when, okay, seriously, movie, fuck you and your janitor if you're never going to explain his presence or his fucking significance. What film school dickhead shat out this script anyway? Dr. Evil leads the cops straight to Adam because the guy was such a dumbass he left his business card in the dressing room. But because the cops are also idiots, they all immediately split up to search the warehouse alone and well out of sight of one another where they're easily picked off. And somehow Adam's getting away with this dressed in a sparkling gold opera costume. Not the finest hour for the Trottleville PD. Nice. I'll get him. Or how about call for backup? Diabolus me adjuvet, so the devil help me. You take care of Herring. I'm going after that son of a bitch. No, don't. He might kill you. Let's go together. My God, son, that's brilliant. You're going to be chief of police one day. No, Jones, don't shoot! Ah, uh, you're not gonna kill me, you bastard! Uh, I mean, you're under arrest! Uh, stop! Police! Ah, uh, fuck it! But it turns out the suit was empty, except for the puppet. What a twist! Adam has disappeared, but the game must go on. And so the players assemble the empty suit of armor in his chair as they play, because we must honor our dear friend. Say what you want about him violently murdering about a dozen people with medieval weaponry. He played a damn fine game of D&D. &D. We'll miss you, Adam. And we shall let Adam throw for the first character. Oh my god, the Dungeon Master was really Dr. Evil this whole time! Oh my god, oh my god! Oh, wait, what? I, I don't... What does that even mean? The DM was Dr. Evil the whole time. I mean, why? How? But if he wants to sway Adam to his cult of satanic worshippers, and remember at the party he does everything he can to do this, why would he also send Adam to his own party with explicit orders to murder everyone there? At any rate, why is Dr. Evil slumming it with a bunch of stoners and D&D geeks? You'd think if he had the power to shapeshift and twist the wills of men, he'd use it to amass unbelievable wealth or start wars or become president or something. Instead, he hangs out with this donut puncher. 
Don't even ask me how he's killed off so easily with a- Hey, wait a minute! This guy's flipping us off! What? Dude! Fuck you too! Fuck this movie with both fists, man! This is the most unbelievably pretentious garbage I've ever seen in my life. Was there any kind of moral to this movie? Was there any kind of protagonist to speak of? Adam doesn't really count as the protagonist because he's basically brainwashed from the first scene of the movie and has no free will of any kind. The only guy with any real character arc in this fucking movie was the janitor. And that's only because he finally finished his tic-tac-toe game. Damn it. I really need to finish Final Fantasy X too, don't I? I just know there's gonna be a guy waiting to kick my ass, but right about now, I'm in the mood to get into a good fight. But first, I need to find my fucking robot. Burton! Where is that piece of junk? Oh! And I'm back! You need pot holders. <coughs> Ooh, wow, a roller skate, man. <laughs> a pair. 